Apart from its comprehensive care for Parkinson's disease, the Penn Neurological Institute also provides treatment options to more than 45,000 patients annually for disorders of the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nervous system. Today, Mark Helms has come here hoping that he will be the newest success story for deep brain stimulation. On the one hand, I try not to think about it too much because I, I want to keep everything in perspective. I, I don't want to build up my expectations to think that everything will be back to normal. And I, I have convinced myself, and I mean this truly, that if, if I can just get back half my capabilities with my hands and head, my head coming back, I'll be satisfied. Which side's worse, the right side this morning? I'm worse than the left? Both are pretty bad. Down. The procedure to implant electrodes into Mark's brain will involve many phases. It's a 10-hour process that will test the endurance of both the patient and the Penn surgical team. The first task involves locating the general area affected by Parkinson's disease, a region of the brain known technically as the subthalamic nucleus. What we will do is we will put a stereotactic head frame on the Helms, which is sort of a box. It goes in with a local, uh, local anesthesia and a little bit of IV sedation. After the stereotactic head frame is placed, we'll do an MRI of his brain. We'll anatomically localize the subthalamic nucleus, which is about the size of a Rice Krispie. But these MRI images can provide only limited information. The team still needs to determine where stimulation should occur within the nucleus. After creating an opening in the skull, Dr. Balta will insert a recording electrode into Mark's brain. The electrode will allow the surgeons to actually hear brain activity as it occurs. He'll be completely awake for this part of the procedure. And we will listen as we go into the brain with these electrodes for uh, the sound that the subthalamic nucleus makes. It has a very, the cells of the subthalamic nucleus have a very specific sonority to them. It sounds like popcorn in a popcorn maker. <laughs> Once we identify the precise cell, and we have a good track of those cells. We will place the deep brain stimulator in that track, and then we will stimulate, and then we will see what the clinical effect is. Since Mark was taken off his medication prior to surgery, symptoms such as tremors and stiffness will be at their very worst. This will help the doctors to accurately measure the effectiveness of the stimulator. Do we suppress tremor? Do we decrease his rigidity? Um, do we make him less slow? Can he move his hands back and forth? So we will be able to see if we get a good clinical effect, and hopefully we will, um, market suppression of tremor at that point. Okay, now I'm going to turn it back on. Okay, I'm going to it up now. Hold it up, hold it up, and it's fine. Like that. Once satisfied with the initial results of the stimulation, the medical team will insert the tiny control devices into Mark's chest. 24 hours a day, these implants will help suppress the majority of his tremors. With surgery completed, Dr. Baltuck will now relay good news to Mark's family. Both simulators are in. They went very well. We've got really excellent suppression on both sides. He's been a great patient. He's been wow. super cooperative. Now all we're As one we're patient to to begins sleep. the recovery phase of this intense operation, the other prepares to undergo deep brain stimulation. I have a life, but it's very limited. Whatever I get from this surgery, I will be grateful for. Whatever relief I get from it, it will be, it's better than what I have now. It will be a relief. When we return, we'll see if this procedure can offer Mickey the life she has been desperately praying for. We invite you to log on to penhealth.com to chat with doctors from this episode. You can even schedule an appointment right now at 1-800-789-PEN.